Hi there, it's Marzena. In my last video I was celebrating the first year of my channel. And today we have yet another celebration to make. We reached 50,000 subscribers. I am so happy that so many people care about my work and are curious of what I'm gonna do next. So, what would be better for a big celebration than my first ever group challenge? A few months ago, Tell from Telly Dollies reached out to me and asked if I want to make a challenge with her. I knew her works, watched all her amazing videos, and personally, I think she is one of the most skilled customizers here on YouTube, so I immediately said yes. So here is my part of our black and white with a hint of a gold challenge. I came up with a simple concept for an unicorn fawn with her human parts black and her horse parts white. Catinua will be a great choice for this one. I started of course by removing her hair. I cut them as short as possible, heated up the head in a boiling water, which made the vinyl and the glue inside the head softer and easier to remove. The neck broke, but it was nothing unfixable. I removed the melted glue and the hair plugs from the head. After that I could use pure acetone to wipe off her factory face. I prepared 9 to 1 acetone and water solution and submerged the head in it to shrink it. Two days of soaking, two days of drying and repeat. I fixed her broken neck with a tiny bit of super glue. Eight days of shrinking and I got this. I cut off her ears because I will be making a horse ears for her later. Then I could mark where I wanted the hair to be. And because it will be a mane, I went a bit further down her neck than the original hairline. And I kept it between her ear holes. She looks like a skunk now. Time for the reroute. I prepared the hair from brushed out yarn and I used sharp scissors, an owl tool and a handmade reroute tool. And I can't stress that enough. A shrunken head is hard, it is true. Rerouting shrunken head isn't hard. It is very simple and I never had any problems doing it. So I'm fine. I have rerouted a few shrunken heads in the past and I will also do it in the future. Again, I will post a great tutorial for it in the description box, so go check it out. I needed to plug those ear holes, make a wire reinforcement for the new ones and fill the head with a high-tech glue to secure the hair plugs inside. I let the glue dry for the night. I trimmed the neck pack heavily, because widening the neck hole with those hair plugs coming almost to the edge wasn't that efficient. I could do it only in the front.
In the end, I needed to heat up the head with a hairdryer, but it finally worked. Here is another proportion comparison. I love head shrinking. I pinned down some fabric at the hairline to protect the hair from sculpting materials, varnish and dust particles. Don't ask me why the footage suddenly turned yellow. I am in a huge need of a new camera. I sanded her scalp just a little bit so the epoxy would stick to it better. I marked the spot and drilled a hole for the horn. Then I glued a piece of wire inside this hole. With epoxy sculpt I covered all the remaining hair holes on both sides of her head. And I also sculpted the new ears and a horn. The first ear looked too big for my taste, so I removed it and made a smaller one. On the next day, when epoxy was well cured, I sanded it a little with a nail buffer and wiped the dust with a wet tissue. Then I could paint the green epoxy with a black acrylic paint. Two coats were enough. I sprayed the head with three layers of Mr. Super Clear and she was ready for the face-up. It was a black and white challenge, so I couldn't use any other colors than black, white and shades of grey. Luckily, Tell suggested to add a hint of gold to our designs. I started with some grey pan pastels to make the face easier to shade. I knew that the varnish will darken the brighter colors, so I put a lot. I added some depth by shading and blushing with white and black. Normally I would cover the doll's body with another piece of clothing before starting this process, but not this time, because I forgot. After a coat of MSC, I repeated the process. I tried to switch to pencils to start sketching the features, but none of my pencils worked. Even the new and fancy Dev and Ink Tense that I just bought and wanted to try them so bad. They were just scratching through the MSC layer. Was it the MSC or the black vinyl of the doll's head? I have no idea. All I knew was that I needed to go straight to the paints. And I wasn't thrilled. I tried one last trick by lifting the pigment from the pencil with a wet brush, but it also didn't work as I wanted. I struggled a little with this face up. Using only grayscale is a bit challenging and the face ups on black heads are not easy in general from what I know. So I knew I was screwed. 
but I still wanted to push forward and make something at least decent. I gave her golden irises. I couldn't add reds or pinks to the water lines, so I decided to add some gold there too. Cause why not? It wasn't that bad, you know? At some point I tried my new black dervent pencil and I have no idea why it worked as a charm. I started drifting from hate to love for this face up. I gave her some white freckles and painted the horn gold. And because I planned something nasty for her, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just being me, I added some trickles of golden blood dripping from her mouth and one eye. shaded her horn and added some golden shimmer to her cheeks, chin, nose, forehead and ears. Ok, I am not a fan of fake eyelashes on dolls. They always look too long and somewhat unrealistic to me. But I've seen one doll with actual white eyelashes and it looked so good. So I decided to try it on this one. I just had a problem doing this in my camera frame, sorry. When the glue dried, I cut the lashes a little bit shorter and I painted the white eyeliner once again. I also painted the lashes, cause they were a bit transparent. I added some lower lashes with watercolor pencils and some highlights on the horn. Then I just needed to add some gloss to her eyes and lips. And her face up was done. Here's another comparison. I'm pretty pleased with her look so far. I 
I covered her head with a plastic wrap, carefully not to press the eyelashes. Time for some mutilation. I cut off her legs at the shins, smoothed the edges and removed all plastic seams, factory numbers and panties. I drilled tiny holes in each leg. I also marked the places when I want the arrows to be piercing through her body. Yes, I just couldn't leave her as just a pretty unicorn, could I? I made sure to drill all the way through. I widened the holes just a bit and placed the toothpicks inside so I could position her missing hand. Well. Pauline's hand. A cat and a dog becoming one as a horse. Ironic, isn't it? Or just weird. In my world, we call that Thursday. I placed the wire for her horse legs and fixed the doll in her final pose using super glue. I also attached her new forearm and glued in leg wires. I used epoxy sculpt once again, this time to create horse legs. I'm smoothing the epoxy with my wet fingertips. I also used epoxy to cover all of her joints. On the next morning I sanded the surface over cured epoxy with a nail buffer and wiped the dust with a wet tissue. Before I painted over the nasty green, I turned the holes into something more like slits because of the arrowheads. Then I could paint the upper joints and the right hand black and the whole legs white. Oh, I also painted the hooves black. And I blushed her body just as I did with her face. I also added some golden paint around the wounds. After putting the toothpicks in place, I sculpted the arrowheads and tails. I think it's called fletching. Okay, so while the arrows were curing, I made the tail. I took Katty's original tail and reshaped it a bit using a heat gun. See? Old shape and a new shape. Then I took some acrylic hair and glued them straight to the tail from the end to the base. And the last part of hair I glued in reversely so I could flip it later and there will be no visible glue. In theory at least. I secured the epoxy part of the arrows with super glue. I added gold paint and ink to her hooves 
nails, arrows and wounds. I painted the fletching white, gave the body gold blushing and fixed everything with last layer of MSC. From the leftover hair I created a lot of fluff that I will be gluing to her butt and legs. First glue, then goes the fluff, repeat when the glue will cure and one last layer of glue on top to secure everything. I also glued some longer hair over her hooves. Ok, let's free her head. She's pretty cute. Time for some hair styling. First I cut her ankle hair shorter and after that I just gave her some simple curls. Last time I went a little bit too far with my stand, so today let's get back to some basics. I mixed clear kitty litter with some wood glue and poured the mixture onto the wooden stand. And this is why you need to poke it while it's curing. I forgot about it and it expanded way too much. Luckily it was still soft, so I could just cut it into desired shape. When it was fully cured I sprayed it with a black spray paint and painted it with grey acrylics. I also added some golden blood splatters. I was annoyed with her puffy bang thingy, so I just sew it to the rest of the hairstyle. So it will lie a little bit more flat. As a last moment decision, I painted all the blood on her with a gloss varnish. So, I glued her to her stand and I added my beloved moss to it. And I swear it looked grey in the bag. Although I think now that it might be a little too greenish. Anyway, she was done. So, this is it, my very first group challenge. It was fun, talking about our projects with another customizer, sharing your progress with someone who actually knows what you're talking about. I also can't wait to see Tell's video. 
and I'm sure that you should do the same. Her dolls are always so gorgeous and this one won't be an exception. Her channel will be linked in the description box down below. So give her some well-deserved love. Also tell me what do you think about my girl. I feel like she is some sort of a lunar unicorn. I'm definitely getting a night creature vibe from her. And I love it. I am very happy with how she turned out. I was so scared to work on a totally black head without reds and pinks allowed in the blushing. But I'm really happy with her. Her fake lashes also work for me here. But don't get attached. I'm still not a fan of black ones. So, let me know what you think about my first ever group challenge. Leave your opinion in the comment section down below. Click the like button if you liked the video. And don't forget to subscribe with the bell if you haven't yet. More projects are on their way. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Dum 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 d